Hello, Julia and Isabella. I'm Dr. Fraser, and I have had the pleasure of working with your amazing, beautiful, smart, brave mom. And she has had a stroke, and you might be wondering, what is a stroke? So I'm going to play a little video for you that will help explain what it is. And then we'll talk about it a little bit more so you can understand kind of where she is in the progress of her recovery process. What is a stroke? A stroke is when something goes wrong inside our brain. Your brain is inside your head. It is the really clever part of your body. It helps you to think, talk, move and jump. Your brain controls everything you do, a bit like a car's engine. Different parts of the brain do different things. The brain has two sides and they control the opposite side of your body. For example, if you lift your left arm, the right side of your brain is making it happen. You can see and feel your brain working all the time when you wiggle your fingers, blow a kiss, point your toes or even sing a song. The brain needs oxygen and energy to work well, a bit like how a garden needs water. Your brain gets energy from your blood, which is pumped up from your heart. It goes up to the brain through tubes called arteries and veins. They are a bit like a network of roads leading up to a big city, your brain. So what is a stroke? There might be a blockage or a leak in the tubes leading to your brain. If this happens, your brain is not getting enough blood and it won't get enough energy or oxygen. When this happens, you have a stroke. A bit like if a car engine cannot get enough petrol. The part of your brain that is not getting enough energy and oxygen will find it hard to work. If it is the talking part of your brain, it may be hard to get the words out. If it is the moving part of your brain, it may be hard to move your arm or leg. So as you can tell from watching that little video, strokes affect people uniquely and differently. Each one is um, somewhat different. So I'm going to describe for you how the stroke has affected your mom. But I want to start by saying she is still very smart and she can understand everything you're saying but the stroke has affected her ability to speak, read, and write. Now, that doesn't mean she can't communicate. It just means it's going to be kind of a different way that she communicates. Um, there's a lot of nonverbal gestures. For example, I don't know if you've ever played charades, but you act something out and try to get the other person to guess what you're saying and that's one thing you can do with your mom so here's an example um <laughs> that was could you guess i was trying to say i'm cold um and at that point you might say oh would you like a coat would you like a blanket um so it's kind of a fun way to communicate with somebody it can be frustrating sometimes, too, because you don't fully understand what the person's trying to say. But you can communicate a lot with yes, no questions. Um, so if you if somebody's making a gesture, um, oh, you're hungry. Uh, it looks like you're hungry. Are you hungry? That's another way you can um, ask yes, no questions. And um, she can still understand everything you're saying, and she would love to hear you talk to her and tell her about your day, what's going on at school, what you're doing that's fun right now, uh, what you want for Christmas, even the not so fun stuff. If you have fears or concerns, she wants to hear those. So if you can um, talk to her, 
uh, that would be wonderful. She would love that. And um, the stroke has affected her ability to um, move the way she used to move, but she's making progress every day. And initially she was pretty much using a wheelchair and now she's walking around. Um, it's still helpful if it's a really long distance to uh, maybe get a ride in a wheelchair. And um, she's not able to drive yet. So she's sad about that because she'd like to be able to drive over and see you and take you to school and your activities, but she can still ride with you in the car. She just can't be the driver yet. Um, and she, little coordinated movements, like trying to button a button or, or manipulate a pen or operate the little buttons on a cell phone are still challenging for her to do. So it would be very hard for her to just call you up on the phone because A, it's hard to manipulate the little buttons on the phone and then B, she doesn't have the speech function working yet. But you could ask an adult or your dad and say, I'd really like to talk to mom and they can get her on the phone and you can talk to her um, because she would love to hear uh, your voice. And the other ways you can communicate with her is you can make drawings for her. Um, you can sing with her. Sometimes being able to repeat words with you or singing can help get those words out. So imagine, imagine your mouth is full of ping pong balls and giant marshmallows and you're trying to say words. Can you imagine how funny they might sound? Um, so right now, when she works really hard to get a word out, that's kind of what it sounds like. It's not real clear um, because all the um, muscles and the tongue isn't working the way that um, the brain wants it to be working right now. But she is working hard every day, like going to school for hours, uh, working on getting her movement back and her speech. It just takes time. Um, and I don't know if you have some questions, but I'm going to send this video to your uncle Cesar. And if you have any questions, he can let me know what they are. And I will, if I can, I will answer them in an email to him and make sure he gets them to you. So um, I'll try to think of some questions that you may or may not have, but these are questions that other children have had in the past when their parent has had a stroke. And the first one is, um, is a stroke contagious? Is it like a cold? Can I catch it? And the answer is no. Um, strokes usually happen in older people, older than your mom. Um, so it's kind of unusual that she, she had a stroke. Um, and the second uh, question that comes up, is it normal or okay to feel worried angry, frustrated, or sad that your mom had a stroke? Absolutely. And it's super okay to cry if you feel like crying. In fact, it's healthy to cry. And sometimes your mom cries tears of joy when she sees your photograph. She just loves you so much and she misses you and um, we're going to make a video with her. Uh, the next video will be with her. So you can see her, um, rocking out and singing. I think that's what we're going to be doing. And, um, I know she has some messages to share with you. So, um, do let me know if you have any questions. Again, you can ask your uncle Cesar. 
he'll contact me. I'll try to make sure that if I can answer your questions that I get them back to you. Um, but I just want you to know that your mom is still the amazing mom she was before and she just has some challenges to overcome. The other question kids have is how long is it going to take before my parent gets better or my parent can speak again? And it can take months, but every day our, you can look forward to little improvements. Or if you hear a word come out, celebrate that improvement because that just is part of the healing and recovery process. Okay, bye for now.